When it comes to unused content, there's a lot on offer in The Legend of Zelda Tears of Kingdom. There are unused dungeons, which are unfinished versions of the temples in Hyrule Castle. There's an early spirit temple, which is a prototype of what became the Construct Factory. And then there are things like items, armor and weapons, most of which are not used in the final game. And while we covered some of this in the last video, where we discussed the dungeons, there's still a lot we didn't go over there. So in this video, we're going to set that right. To look at all the unused content and bizarreness in the files, and show you how it all works in game. Let's go! Starting with some unused items, like say, the other two pieces of the Ancient Heroes aspect. Because here's the thing, in the final game, it's not your typical armour set. Instead, you equip one piece and overrides Link's whole design. But this didn't used to be the case. No, there are two other pieces of the set which you can get as unused items. These are the chest and leg pieces, indicated to be a Zonai costume rather than transformation. Alas, we can't show you the effect in game. Since while the items exist, they don't work as expected. Instead, they just work like the final one does and override your whole design. Okay, that's not technically true. They do have differences in the menu, since they override a part of Link's design there. In the game world itself, Link just looks like the ancient hero, as usual. Still, the armor pieces do look cool, and it'd be interesting to one day see how this worked in game. But it's not just this piece of armor that goes unused here. No, there are some other unused items too. Like, say, this Zonite piece. It resembles a set of ingots or other piece 4, which indicates they may have multiple types at one point in development. Unfortunately, this doesn't work in game. Since while the icon is there, weird things happen if you try to select it. As in, the whole game sort of soft locks immediately kind of weird. Presumably, since the game has no data for the item, it has no idea what to do. It locks the menu, removes the ability to access every other menu, and all the menu options stop working there and then. Save, load, return to title screen, all completely dead. What's more, if you go to the weapon or shield tab, all the fused weapons, see the icons place a picture of the link instead. It's certainly interesting to look at, though it means you'll need to exit the game to make any actual progress. It also has some other weird states in game too. Holding it as part of a bundle won't work since it doesn't get added, and while the price of 20 rupees has been set, shopkeepers refuse to buy it too. Still, at least the icon exists and we get to see the game fall apart. That's something, right? It's also this item that represents Rora's arm. We initially thought it would be used for the final cutscene, but it's impossible to equip and make the save file unstable and imported. Instead, the actual armor used for the ending cutscene is a combination of armor 999 head and armor 1501 upper, with the former giving Link his breath to wild hairstyle and the latter restoring his arm. Both are unused in the normal game, but can be modded in the inventory if need be and work exactly as expected. There are also unused copies of the Master Sword too. These are labelled Weapon Sword 071 and Weapon Sword 071 Broken respectively, and are very interesting items indeed, since the game has no idea how to handle their naming. So, while they appear as Master Sword by default, their name actually changes if you switch to them in the Quick Select menu. As a result, they will take their name from the fused material used for the last weapon used before switching to them. This technically means you can have things like Silver Lionel, Flame Glil, or Captain Construct as a weapon, a bit with the Master Sword description and the model for the last weapon used in game. It's hilarious when they get badly damaged, though sadly the break message is normal. Which brings us to some other interesting items, namely the gear from the prologue. You see, while the message not found sword is most well known, it's not the only item Link has back at this point. No, he's got a full set of gear that you usually don't see. These include the well-worn hairband to give him the Breath of the Wild hairstyle, a normal set of Hylian trousers, and most interesting of all, a copy of the Champion's Levers, also called the Message Not Found. This is the same status as the final Champion's Levers, turns into Tunica Memories and upgrade at Great Fairy Fountain, and is only used in the prologue. So why does this exist? Well, tied Link's arm in the intro of course. Yep, when this copy of the Champion's Levers is worn, Link's arm looks normal again, just like he did prior to his encounter with the Demon King. Which in turn, also means that technically speaking, Link catches Royal's arm right from the start of the game. It's just covered up by a specialised piece of armour. Either way, Jodotis don't end with Link's gear. No, Zelda's equipment is pretty interesting too, since her torch can actually be obtained as a weapon in-game via mods. It's got a specialised icon not used for anything else in the game. 
plus a few very interesting properties you might not expect. For example, you can actually fuse items to this one without glitches, unlike the message not found. This makes the icon look really funky, since the flame overlaps the fused material and gets cut off by the boulder. And the way the weapon works changes based on how you equip it too. For example, if you equip it normally, while the weapon isn't already equipped, it will act like a normal torch. On the other hand, if you switch to it from another weapon, then it will act like a torch regardless of whether it's lit or not. This looks really odd in game, especially if some stupid object has been fused to the end of it. But the oddities don't end there. No, they continue with the item's descriptions too, since, depending on how you select it in the menu, the game will show different names to the item. If it's the first item you select, then the fuse will be displayed on its own with only a number for the base weapon's attack power at the front. This is how the camera room treats it too, with only the fused material being recognised in the viewfinder. On the other hand, if you hover over a different weapon first, the name of Zelda's torch in the description will be copied over from that weapon. And it's seemingly random too. It's really weird and we have no idea how it actually works. The game also struggles with the name when it's about to break too. As a result, the badly damaged message says something like your is badly damaged, whereas the broken message says your broke. It's pretty weird and looks like some sort of English from a bad translation. Still, functionality wise, it's mostly the same as every other weapon and shares a lot with the message not found. You can drop the torch to pick it up again just fine, it can be separated from its fused material at the break apart shop just fine. You can even display it in the weapon stand at Link's house and have to retain all its properties and collect it again. It's a reliable weapon, which is more than we can say about the next few. The weapons the sages have in game. Those are also unique items, but are a lot weirder in terms of mechanics than the message not found or Zelda's torture. For example, weapon L Sword 154 is the boulder break Unobo uses as a sage. It's weaker than the real one with only 33 attack power. But it's identical in terms of appearance. And the same goes for Weapon Spear 150, which is a light scale Trident Sidon uses. This one is actually more powerful than the usual one, with 40 attack power, but it doesn't have the Water Warrior effect that the regular version does. There's also Weapon Sword 152 Main and Weapon Sword 152 Sub, which seem to be the two scimitars of seven used by Riju. It's also weaker, with 25 attack power compared to 28 the regular one has. And all these weapons are very weird indeed. For starters, they have no icon, and one will only appear if something is fused to them. Which you'll have to do via save editing, since you can't fuse to them by default, and dropping them makes it impossible to collect again. In this state, you can only use Ultra Hand to move them, and that's it. And the sheaths aren't set up correctly either. No, if you try to press B to put them away again, they'll be strapped to links back horizontally rather than be attached vertically like a normal weapon is. This looks incredibly weird and makes some interesting screenshots to say the least. Reju's weapons also have other weird properties too, namely using your shield of Link take out with a scimitars to defend with. And this isn't just a visual quirk either. No, Dextra Scimitar does in fact work like a shield and can be used to block attacks from enemies. It's a neat setup and one which is surprised didn't get used in the game. But weapons aren't the only unused sage equipment you can get this way. No, two Lin's bows can be acquired like this too, with three different versions existing with different levels of attack power. The first is Weapon Bow 116, which is a modified Swallow Bow. It has one more attack power than the regular one, but is otherwise much the same which can't really be said with Weapon Bow 128. No, despite looking like a great eagle bow and being labelled as such, it's actually a single shot bow with 26 attack power. So yeah, here's a great eagle bow with no multi shot. Finally, there's Weapon Bow 129, another of two Lin's great eagle bows. This one is basically one to one copy the normal one, with the exact same attack power and functionality. And when we say one to one copy, we mean it. Why? Because if you drop this item, it actually turns into Great Eagle Bow. Yeah, it's the only one you can pick up later, since it's close after its normal counterpart to just transform into it. And speak of transformations, that brings us to another point. They'll all become the normal counterparts when put on a weapon stand. Weapon L Sword 154 becomes a Boulder Breaker. Weapon Spear 150 becomes a Light Scale Trident. 
and all the Tulin's bows become the regular counterparts. Finally, the break apart shot acts like dropping the weapon does. The weapon itself becomes uncollectible or the fuse is collectible as normal and that brings us to another interesting category of weapons you can find in the game. Namely, Ganondorf's weapons. Yeah, the Demon King is a few of his own too. Or at least, his own bow. Called Weapon Bow 166 for Ganondorf. No, we're not making this up. It's a copy of the Demon King's bow in every relevant sense. He doesn't have the icon, he functions the same way, even taking your current health into account. Like the Sage weapons, if you drop it or display it, it will just turn into a Demon King's bow as usual. Finally, we have the last set of unused items. These aren't really unused, but are instead weapons used by NPCs and bosses for their abilities. For example, Weapon Rule Me Golem Left and Weapon Rule Me Golem Right are the left and right arms for Minoru's construct. And surprisingly, these actually sort of work as weapons for Link. They have the message not found name, no description, 38 attack power, and can be swung like a sword despite remaining invisible. Heck, you can even display them on a weapon stand. You know, in case you want to display invisible construct arms for whatever reason. However, they have their issues too. You can't drop them at all, they don't show up in the camera viewfinder, and if you try to fuse anything to them, the game will just freeze. They're also mirrored by Weapon Dungeon Boss Zonai, which is the arms of C's Construct Boss. Again, same attack power abilities, same drawbacks. Meanwhile, Weapon Raw Me Golem Back is a weapon slot for the Construct's back, which can also be wielded as a weapon via save editing. However, it's pretty weird even by these standards. It has no attack power displayed, you can't fuse anything to it, and it can't be collected from a weapon stand after being placed there, so you can technically display it, just not pick it up again. It also has the same weird name issues as the unused Master Sword, copying the name from the fuse material attached to the last weapon you had equipped. Unlike that one though, it also looks like the fuse material too, at least if you don't unfuse it again. Meanwhile, Weapon Dungeon Boss Zone I Front are the weapons fuse the back of C's construct, and these can't be used in game. The file seems to soft lock for loading if you have this item in your inventory. Finally, there's Weapon Goron Knuckle, which is apparently Nobo's ability. As far as we can tell, this one works like a combination of Minoru's Construct's arms and his backplate. It displays an invisible item with zero attack power. You can attack with it, but it also gets stuck on any weapon stand you use it on. However, it does have one other weird side effect. If you try to spin attack with it, the game will just freeze. No, we're not sure why either. Either way, those are all the unused items and weapons in Zelda Tears of Kingdom. But the game doesn't just have unused items. No, there are food effects in that situation too. Most notably, twice jump and emergency avoid. Neither have any effect in game, but we're going to assume based on the names, they let Link double jump and dodge enemy attacks more easily respectively. There are also variants of existing effects too. For example, Swim Speed Up, Attack Up Cold, Attack Up Hot, and Attack Up Thunderstorm can all have level 3 effects despite it being possible to cook food that powerful to activate them in game. As far as we can tell, these work as expected. And speaking of effects, there are also unused weapon properties too. Namely, Critical Damage Up. When a weapon has this property, critical hits should do 3 times the usual damage rather than being merely twice as powerful. Unfortunately, it was seemingly cut early enough in development this effects no longer work. However, there are signs in the files, so it's unused nonetheless. Still, on some unused dialogue now, and to be honest, there's not really much of it, with the main stuff being messages from Breath of the Wild that are impossible in Tears of the Kingdom. For example, if you speak to Horn Statue in our upgrades, you get this message. In Breath of the Wild this was possible, and we featured it in our trivia video. 
being tears of kingdom you can't do this since you need at least one health upgrade to open the door in the temple of time and leave the great sky island there's also a message for speaking to a goddess statue with four hearts and stamina this is impossible in both breath of the wild and tears of kingdom but the message exists in both of them with it saying the following Finally, there's also dialogue for getting a schema stone without auto build too. Unlike the Eager Schematics, which can be attained any time, these aren't given to you before auto build with a construct saying to come back later. If you did manage to get one early, it will have the following description. And that's all the unused text there is. It's not much, but it is what it is. Either way, onto locations now. Yeah, we looked at some of these before. The six unused dungeons hidden within Tears of the Kingdom. But there were a few things we missed out on there. For starters, the shrine in Hyrule Castle is very different in the beta. In the final version, it's a Seru Tabamak shrine. This one has used Ultra Hand and Ascend to make a path to the end with a more puzzle focused setup. On the other hand, in the unused version of Hyrule Castle, it's got the Isamin shrine instead. A reverse version of the first Proving Ground shrine in the game. So why is this the case? Why could the shrine be different now? Well, there are two possibilities. Possibility 1 is that the shrine was simply changed in development. I mean, it could make sense. There's no reason the Isamin shrine couldn't be in Hyrule Castle. While possibility 2 is that the idea of the shrines was changed with the shrines having each other's internal IDs earlier in development. This is a lot less likely given most file names seem to remain the same, but it's a possibility nonetheless. Another small thing we didn't mention is what happens if you get a sage's vow or said sage's act in the story. Put simply, the ritual sage disappears the moment it's used. Yep, upon activating it, the actual sage will vanish in game and will stay gone until you reload the area with the vow disabled again. What's more, this even occurs if the sage is outside your party or activated. So, if you ever felt like banishing side onto a shadow realm, well, here you go. On some unused rooms now. Interestingly, all of these are unused in Breath of the Wild too. Like, say, this one, behind the door at the top of Hyrule Castle. Just like in the last game, there's no way to end said room. However, it does have an interior, so perhaps they'll plan to put something there at one point. Honestly, we're surprised they didn't just stick the dusk bow inside and call it a day. There's another side room in Gerudu Town too, namely, right behind this shop front here. This is separate from the secret club for some reason and goes entirely unused in both games. Why is it here? Who knows? But there is one unused room from Breath of the Wild that did get used in Tears of Kingdom. Yep, inside the Deku Tree, you can use Ascend to reach this tiny room with a cork and some flowers. It's part of another side quest and a neat little extra in the area. But did you know it was actually in Breath of the Wild too? Yep, this whole room existed there as well, with just a few flowers there to know its existence. Presumably, the devs realised this area could be accessible now and decided to make the most of it. Either way, that's all the unused content there is in Zelda Tears of Kingdom. There's not as much to discuss here as there was for the unused dungeons, and the content isn't as flashy as the unused content from other Nintendo games. But it's interesting to look at nonetheless, and gives even more of a glimpse into what got left on the cutting room floor. So thanks Echo Cola for their help understanding the game and providing mods to use these items. Thanks to Draken for the footage of Inside the Great Deku Tree. And thanks to you guys for watching the video. Hopefully you found it interesting and if so give the video a like. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more. Then leave your thoughts in the comments below or over on the Discord server today.